Hi, I'm Brian with Pioneer Builders. I'm over in Western Washington. Today we're going to talk about can mini splits actually dehumidify? First, let's talk about why your house might need dehumidification. The fact of the matter is, we're in the Pacific Northwest, climate zone 4C. It's pretty temperate here. In the summertime, we get higher humidity, but most of the year, we're a heating climate. It's not that big a deal. Those of you who are in like Louisiana or Georgia, you're the experts on dealing with humidity. However, this year, I think we've had like four different condensation challenges and we never have to deal with that. So what's going on? Climate change, it's bizarre. Uh, we're dealing with things we haven't had to deal with to the extent that we are now. So what's happening? Again, we live close to the ocean we're gonna talk just very simple uh, building science, climate science, whatever you wanna call it. I'm no scientist. But as we know, when the sunlight comes down and hits water, it evaporates. It's taking that heat energy, that water's absorbing it, and it's changing phase into water vapor. That water vapor is like energy in the air. The atmosphere now has more energy in it. That's why when it's humid, it feels kind of sticky, a little clammy. It's just a little more uncomfortable for what our skin is used to. If we have a lot of condensation, we use something like a dehumidifier to make a part of that piece of equipment very cold. So now while the sun has taken that water, you might see there's a lake behind me. It takes that water that has energy and it starts removing that energy, changing it back into a liquid. When that happens, that liquid collects and via a drain path, it will leave the structure. So you can dehumidify the inside of your house using equipment. Now the fact of the matter is, dedicated dehumidification is kind of the cat's meow. If you're living in a place where there is a sustained high level of humidity or a basement, you might consider like a Santa Fe product uh, I've got experience with April Air. Literally, I can only think of one dedicated dehumidifier that we've ever installed. That just goes to show you that in the Pacific Northwest, we typically don't have to deal with that. But we're having to deal with it more and more. So the question is, can mini splits dehumidify? We're just getting ready to do the work on this, but I wanted to show you this ladder real quick. Louisville ladder, they sent this to me. I absolutely love it. Someday we'll probably do another video on it. But you've got this sweet platform. So what I'm gonna do first is turn this on and then turn it over into dehumidification mode. Now the fact of the matter is, I cheated a little bit today and I've been running our water to try to get the humidity elevated in this room. It's morning time when we're filming this. If it was later in the day, like four, five, six o'clock at night, we're filming this first part of September, it would be warmer and there'd be more humidity. But since it's early in the morning, and we actually run this in air conditioning overnight, my wife and I like it a little cooler, there wouldn't have been much humidity. So I did try to elevate that, I didn't use the exhaust fan like I normally would, and I can feel the humidity in the air. So now we can see that this is opened up, and we're gonna let that run for a while. So the compressor at the outdoor unit is running right now. And when it's in dehumidification mode or dry mode, the fan doesn't work the same way that it does when it's in cooling or air conditioning mode. When it's in cooling or air conditioning mode, it'll modulate the fan speed, but basically when it's in dehumidification or dry mode, that fan slows way down. And when that, uh, I think it's the evaporator coil is technically what it is at the mini split head in here, that's gonna get really cold and we'll see if it starts condensing water. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the unit now. One thing I'll point out, this is where the LED shows. It's too bright for my wife and I. <laughs> so that's why we have this little guy taped on there. But you'll see when we open it up where that LED is inside the cover. Okay, I just went ahead, took the cover off. You can see here, that's that green LED that I just referred to. Now, why in the world did me as a builder have to become familiar with these guys. As I've said before, we've done everything wrong at least once. 
In this case, we didn't necessarily do something wrong, but we're definitely not used to dealing with humidity. I had took, put this in dehumidification mode, and all of a sudden I, I had water all over the place. It was on the wall, it was on the floor, so I had to figure out what in the world was going on. And that's what helped me to learn. We'll look at some of these components, but put simply, the drain ends up discharging here for the condensation, but from the unit itself, it comes out on the right side. There's almost no slope to it. When you're dealing with sanitary sewer or even storm water, slope is a pretty big deal. With condensation, I don't even know if there's a plumbing code about it. But in any case, there is this drain pipe here. Because the condensation drain goes so far away, uh, or maybe I should say it's closer to this side, it would almost have been nice, it would have been nice to utilize this overflow. I don't know if that's a manufacturer's approved solution though. That's what one guy recommended to me, that's what he's done. Take that with a grain of salt. I don't want you to do something that you're not supposed to do. We're gonna look up inside. I've got this in that dry mode, and let's see if we can find some condensation that's being formed. So we'll talk just a little bit more about what caused the failure in a minute. But I'm just using my little FLIR camera here, and I'm not necessarily an expert on emissivity. I've got it set to cold, and so you can see this is showing its minimum of 37 degrees, plus or minus, so you can see that is really cold. I don't know if that's 100% accurate. That's the point. You've got metal in here, you've got plastic, but that portion has gotten very cold. And as we zoom out, you can see where those electrical components are. But that fan or fin at the bottom, that is definitely cold that's coming out there. All up in there, that's showing about the 40 degrees. Very, very cold. Now, I've got friends on Instagram that know way more than me. They're experts on this, and I got some help because I didn't know what the problem was here. So Eric from Mechanical Hub, he's on Build Show Network. He's one of the folks that called me, uh, which is so cool that people actually do that. Anyway, this is what I ended up buying from Amazon. It's called Pan Treat Condensate Pan Treatment. If you take a look, that's a, an A-coil. We're used to seeing that more in a furnace type situation. In this case, really your condensation pan is at this mini split head. So what one of the recommendations was, was to actually use a vacuum cleaner on that condensation pipe and pull that gunk out. So I've got a wet dry vac, that's what we did, and sure enough, you could hear gunk coming out. Then I cleaned up the inside. I'm gonna have to re-clean this one, and then I'm gonna put these little tablets in there. They have recommendations for how much to do on this. I'm gonna play around with it. Here's just three of them, and just see how it works. We've lived here for, I think we're coming up on four or five years, never had a problem. So a couple of things that were probably going on. One, we've got more condensation just because of what's been going on with the climate. And two, it can just take time for, <laughs> for life to grow for that microbial growth to get to the point where it could actually clog that line. Now that I know that that's a problem, I can just periodically put these tablets in here and there won't be any problem whatsoever. Now we're outside, so remember that condensation pipe had to run along the underside of that mini split head and then I don't know what it does inside these walls here. We built this a long time ago and quite honestly I'm a better builder now than I was back then. This is where it discharges. You can see when you look at the bark from overnight, we had condensation already. There's even a hole here where that drip has been happening. We've only been running it in dry mode this morning for a little while, so there isn't a whole lot, but if we look under here, we will be able to see a little bit of water. And that brings us to a conclusion of putting that thing back together. Uh, I'm actually, just turned it on, I'm gonna leave it off. It's not very cold uh, or very warm today. Probably turn it on later in the day. But anyway, so kind of an interesting thing to get to see the actual condensation forming. And then what, again, that's done is it's taken it from this room and moved it out there. Now, we did talk about where that uh, water vapor was coming from. Some of it is from outside, but this is where my wife and I sleep. Where else? might be moisture coming from. When we breathe, we're letting out water vapor. When we sweat and that evaporates off of our skin, 
we've got our bathroom attached to this part of the house. And so while typically we run our exhaust fan, uh, some of the water vapor is going to come out into this room. So it makes sense why there might even be an elevated amount of water vapor in this particular room. So what's the lesson? Mini splits do dehumidify. Let me repeat that. Mini splits do dehumidify. However, there has to be a caveat to that. They do not dehumidify as efficiently or with the same level of control as a dedicated dehumidifier. What does that mean? What's a dedicated dehumidifier? Honestly, one that you put in your room. That is a dedicated dehumidifier. However, as a spec builder, we don't have an unlimited budget for everything that we put into our houses. Additionally, while we do have to deal with humidity in the summertime, typically where I live, it's not going to be a year-round situation. And so by us putting mini splits in all of our houses, sometimes it's a ductless, sometimes it's a ducted unit, we are giving some dehumidification. Remember, we're taking some of that energy from the air and removing it from the house. It makes the house more comfortable and it lowers the risk of microbial growth. It's not as good and I wouldn't recommend it for everybody. But it's nice to know that that's your option. When you have one piece of equipment that can heat, it can cool, and it can provide some level of dehumidification, that's pretty good. It's kind of like, yeah, I would absolutely love to have a super nice Porsche, but I don't, and I'm not going to. I can be just as happy with a well-built Toyota, or if I wanted to upgrade to a Lexus, something like that. Life is about trade-offs. Life is about budget. But when we've educated ourselves, we can really make good decisions. Maybe not the best, maybe not the peak in every situation, but we've taken all of those dials and we've made some reasonable decisions. Well, thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time on The Build Show. <laughs>